Good afternoon, my name is Michael Riggs. Um, glad to be here with you today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about my action research project, which was increasing performance of 10th grade African American students on the Global Scholars Math Scores at Leeds High School uh, for the 2017-18 school year. This was a unique project for me um, because I ended up transferring and getting a new job at the end of last year. Um, so I did not finish out the school year there, but was able to through communication back and forth with some with some people and some good friends was able to uh, complete the assignment there. Um, background. Um, prior to um, last year, um, not only did we have Global Scholar Scores, before that was ACT Aspire. And uh, historically at Leeds, the math scores were low. And um, particularly, um, this discrepancy in African American kind of stood out while uh, the test scores at Leeds were not bad overall. Um, we had to look into some details to actually pull something out that we had a problem and, and that's kind of where we uh, settled. Um, uh, our previous uh, administration had said that the school improvement plan was to increase these scores by 5%. Uh, so that kind of played into um, what our goal was in this. And then um, through a literature review and, and meeting uh, with the administration, several things emerged, which were the foundation for our research performed for this project. Uh, the lit review, um, you know, bottom line is there are several key factors that influence learning for um, minorities and African Americans um, in particular. Um, a couple of those things uh, were culturally specific content, um, communal learning groups, culturally specific learning styles, and then uh, parental involvement. Um, you know, to be honest, I think with with anybody, the more important that your people you respect, which for most people would be their parents or their elders, um, that have a significant role in their life, that the more important they place uh, the value of things such as education, or particularly these subjects like math, then obviously the more serious you'll take it. Um, that was our background. So our problem statement. It's the purpose of this research to identify themes and strategies in the literature and implement potential solutions in order to improve student learning, which, if successful, should be demonstrated by an increase in performance on future Global Scholars math scores in the African American 10th grade population of Leeds High School. Um, our thoughts and definitions. After 10th grade math teachers uh, at Leeds High School implement culturally specific problems and examples into their teaching create and promote communal learning environments and increase parental involvement, 10th grade African American students will improve their scores on the mathematics portion of the performance series test. All right, so our study population. Our study population was 10th grade math students um, who are currently enrolled, or 10th grade African American students who are currently enrolled in math classes at Leeds High School. Um, the design of this study is experimental by nature um, and determining if the strategies identified from the review of literature, when implemented, have a positive impact on African American learning, increase the global scholars mathematics scores in the 10th grade African American population at Leeds High School. Um, there are a couple of things um, that, that we could do um, to be implemented that would help uh, our students. Uh, one of those would be uh, parent education to implement increased parental involvement. We've got to get our, we had to get our parents involved. And how do we do that? Well, we'll talk about that next. Uh, teacher education to better understand the African American culture and the importance of increasing learning in mathematics. So we had to make sure that our teachers um, were aware of things that were important, important to the African American culture um, so that they could then, um, you know, place an importance on those things as well and implement some of the things that were important to them into their lessons. Um, and then implementation of teaching strategies into the classroom. So uh, what we found out through the literature was that um, you could actually do some cross-curriculum teaching strategies um, to help out uh, with the learning. So we had to have some baseline scores to work off of. So our, uh, these scores are from the fall of 2017, um, from 10th grade high school students. We had 124 students in the 10th grade taking math. Um, we had 33 African Americans and the number we work uh, from and that, that was important to us that we saw the biggest problem was we had 14 African Americans which was 42.42% 42 
of the African-American scored below average on the math part of the Global Scholars in the fall of 2017. So that was kind of, uh, that was where we were working from. We wanted that number to decrease, um, which therefore would make our other numbers increase at a goal of uh, 5% or more. So um, procedure, we had to, uh, the first thing we wanted to tackle was parental involvement. So in, in order to do this, we had to um, get a questionnaire answered by our parents. This is one that we um, constructed. It was just, it, it was very simple. Uh, we did it at a, um, a, a our, you know, a parent night at school or, where they come in and we met with our 10th grade math parents and, um, and just asked them to, to simply, uh, before school even gets heavy real quick, um, you know, a score of zero, one, two, or three with a high score of, of 12 out of four questions. Just simply, do you check your child's homework? Never, monthly, weekly, or daily. Score at zero to three. Uh, do you discuss events at school? Attend your child's events at school. How often do you know about what is going on in your child's classroom, test projects, etc.? What this did would give us a baseline of how involved they are in their child's academic school life. Uh, we would do the exact same questionnaire at the end of the semester to see if we have increased that. Now, um, you know, some things that you end up finding out through this is uh, there are some issues that you can't necessarily guarantee. You know, parents can obviously lie about this. Um, they can feel insecure um, in, in how much time they uh, have previously spent or lack thereof and, um, and, and don't feel the need to be truthful. Um, they could not fill it out altogether. You know, you can't make parents do things. So um, there were some, some outlying factors that we could not control, but we tried to do our best. Um, one of the things we had to do uh, from a procedure standpoint was make sure that our teachers were educated um, about the problem and what our goals were and what we're going to do to implement that. Um, we wanted to make sure that our teachers were educated on the literature. You know, we held a... Um, professional development uh, at some point during a half day to kind of, for those for the math department to, to help them understand what we previously talked about. And then the implementation of this uh, in their actual classroom. So one of the things we found was that um, uh, word, by, by including word problems in math and, uh, read, and using reading comprehension strategies, um, math scores would go up. So students could read about things that interest them then they were more apt to be successful um, on the math test. And then, uh, for example, uh, using a reading comprehension strategy like a diamond organizer, um, which we'll talk about on the next slide, and then cultural references used in at least 50% of the problems, and then communal learning groups uh, where at least one African-American student was included in that, whether that be a study group, a homework group, a self-teaching group. Um, but, but they found out through the literature review that small groups, small group setting, uh, African American students were more um, apt to learn. Uh, the diamond organizer was interesting because it was a reading strategy uh, where normally you would fill out and answer these questions based off what you've read. Um, what they found out was for mathematics, um, students were able to express um, their, their th the procedure of thought in solving a problem um, and then the teacher could go back and see where it was that they messed up and so that they could train them to teach diff or to think differently when solving these problems. Pretty interesting. Um, and, and the data collection, all right, so from a parental involvement questionnaire, you know, it, you score from zero to 12, with 12 being uh, as involved as you could possibly be. Um, baseline scores versus post-semester scores, our average score uh, was eight for the baseline. It increased to 8.8 .8 post-semester. Overall increase in parental involvement by 10% in all 10th grade students. And then for African American students, it went from 5.8 baseline to 6.1 post semester, an overall increase of 4%. Um, and again, this is just based off the information we had. You know, this was not 100%, all 124 uh, math parents that we had in there um, did not take this, um, but it, it gave us an idea of where we were. Um, our baseline global scholars, math versus post implementation. Um, you can see here that uh, this number originally uh, for below average was at 42% and, uh, and now we're at 30% um, instead of the 42. So by doing that, uh, all of our numbers, what we found in the mathematics, they increased by greater than 5%. We dropped that one down below 
Uh, so our administration was very happy in the results that we got. You know, the teachers initiated um, these change over the semester. The scores were immediately available, which was nice about um, technology. And um, anyway, it found out that uh, not only did the African American test scores go up, but overall our math scores in general went up, uh, and these strategies helped. So threats, we kind of talked about this briefly. You know, a, a parental involvement can't be required or managed. Um, parents could fill out pre-questionnaire, post-questionnaire inaccurately. Uh, previous education levels of the participants, that's another thing that we hadn't mentioned yet, but, you know, it, being a teacher is always um, difficult trying to reach every student. And so, um, you know, you can't control the entry level or knowledge or, or mastery level of students when they enter your class. You have to take them as they are and try to catch, catch them up and push them forward. Um, and so some, you know, may have been well behind others and haven't really caught up yet to these strategies, and that's just part of teaching. Um, students have difficulty with standardized testing, may not be able to score well on the test, even though they're learning um, the content, even though they're showing improvement class, you know, standardized testing may not be their thing. And so uh, that could show there that, that that's a threat to what we did. So anyway, uh, the summary though is that uh, the implementation of the evidence-based strategies um, to improve African American mathematics scores in 10th grade at Leeds High School resulted in improved testing scores demonstrating increased mathematics knowledge and learning. Um, this is my reference slide and then the instructional leadership standards um, that we mastered through this. The last um, project I want to talk about is my diversity plan at West Morgan High School, um, which I'm currently at now. You know, why did I choose this project? Um, I came to West Morgan last year towards the end of April. Um, I was new to the school. I thought it would be uh, this was one of the most diverse schools I've ever been to. Um, through the organizer here, you can see that 73% of our population was um, Caucasian, 18% Hispanic, 8% African American, and then 1% uh, other. And so it was very diverse, um, a bigger Hispanic population than I've ever um, been a part of in any other school. And so I was just interested into how we can um, include everybody and, and make um, all of our students aware of the diversity that is at West Morgan. So our diversity vision, um, West Morgan High School is committed to creating a learning environment that reflects the diversity of the community through a well-rounded curriculum, extracurricular activities, guest speakers, and special events in order to make educating every student, regardless of background, culture, or creed, a priority. Um, our objective, there were several things that I thought were important um, that we could implement uh, through objectives. Um, to increase our diversity awareness and, and make us a better uh, group. The first was implement uh, diversity professional development for teachers. You know, our teachers need to be aware of this. A lot of times they get caught up in the day-to-day -day activities and aren't really uh, aware of what's all going around them. Um, so anyway, I just thought we could do that. Um, the other object number two was to implement diversity training for uh, school student leaders. You know, we really um, promote um, our, our leadership within our school with our students. You know, we have those those core group of kids that uh, that help run the school, and um, we wanted them to be aware of the diversity that is West Morgan. They grow up, uh, they grew up in it, so you know they may not necessarily be um, real cognizant of of what it is that they're a part of every day, um, and we need uh, to make them aware of that that this is a unique place and that um, uh, they should be proud of that, and uh, and they should make. Uh, help us uh, get that awareness out to the rest of the school and, that, and they should be proud of it as well. Um, objective three, improve the mathematics scores for minority students and those in the free and reduced lunch program. Kind of goes along with my action research. Uh, some of those same strategies will be implemented in this objective. And then objective four is promote school-wide and community-wide diversity awareness. Well, you know, how do we do that? Well, we could do events and uh, promote uh, different activities at school and uh, different publications that school puts out. Uh, do that through it. So the results of this um, plan, um, uh, objective one and two, which were the, the, the um, uh, professional development for teachers and, and the leadership training for students, um, are, are being planned out for this summer and the beginning of next school year. We got into it a little late um, to plan it for, for this year, so anyway, that's actually currently being planned. I look forward to, to having that to do next year. Objective three was to improve the math scores. Um, 
and um, it was implemented throughout the, the school year using some of the same strategies we talked about in my action research plan. Um, and what we ended up finding out was um, uh, teachers felt like using those strategies um, in class, the scores went up as far as their, just their, their chapter tests and stuff. Um, we're supposed to take the ACT when we get back uh, here in a few weeks, and so we're looking to see uh, results and be able to compare previous ACT scores from last year to this year and see how our group did. The objective for it was, was a community-wide awareness, bring people together and, and celebrate. Um, one of the things we've done is, is we've got a Cinco de Mayo Day uh, celebration plan. We're gonna involve people from the community um, bring our students together. Um, everybody have a big, uh, a big get together, and just kind of uh, make people aware of, of the community we live in and the great place uh, that we work. Uh, these are the instructional leadership standards that I mastered through this project, and um, I appreciate your time.